Hi, in this video we are going to learn everything about lists and tables in HTML. Both lists and tables are a really good way to structure your texts and data. So we should learn how to use them. But don't worry, it isn't difficult to learn them. So without further talking, let's jump into the code. There are three different types of lists in HTML. The first one we are going to have a look at is the so-called unordered list. We create unordered lists with HTML by using the UL tag. The UL element is the container element for each individual list item. We create list items by using the LI tag. Because we want to create a shopping list now, let's create our first list item, eggs. We also want to get cucumber, tomatoes and bread. So let's add them to our shopping list as individual li elements. Let's open the html file in the browser now and have a look at our list. As you can see, each of our list items appears in the list. Because we have created an unordered list, the list items are preceded by a dot. List items of ordered lists, on the other hand, are numbered. Ordered lists work similar to unordered lists. An unordered list consists of the container element, this time it is ol, not ul, and the individual li elements representing a single list item, just as for the unordered list. This time we want to create a list including all the steps to do our housework. We have to clean the kitchen, wash dishes and do the laundry. Let's have a look at our list in the browser now. And as we have just mentioned before, list items of ordered lists are numbered. Because we have three different items, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3. But what if you want to create a list consisting of a list item and a description for the list item? Don't worry, HTML also got us covered with this. We can create so-called description lists by using the DL tag. List items of description lists aren't created by using the li element, but rather we use two different tags. The dt element is used to define the title of the list item, and the dd element is used to define the description of the item. Let's create an item HTML, which is the description title, and a suitable description for HTML, which could be, quote, Markup language for the web, unquote. Let's add the second item, CSS, which is, of course, the styling language of the web. So let's add this sentence as the description of the item. Now let's have a look at the browser and we will see the description list looks very different to our ordered and unordered lists. Now we have learned everything about lists. So let's have a look at tables next. To start creating tables with HTML, we have to use the table element. The table element serves as the container element for all of our row and column definitions. Let's create our first row. Rows of tables are created with the tr element. It is the first row of our table, so we want to have headings inside of this row. To create a table heading, we use the th element. We will create a table listing different electronic products and their prices. So the first heading column will be product, which will contain the name of the product. The second heading column will be price, because our table should contain the product name and the price. Now we have finished our heading row. So let's go to our first data row. Let's create another tr element. But this time we won't use th to create a column, but we use td. td stands for table data. So the first product we want to add to our table is a phone. And the price of the phone will be 500. So our second td element is 500. Let's check our table in the browser and we will see we have the phone and its price. Most tables come with a cool border, because borders around cells increase the readability of the table. So we want to have a cool border too. We need to write a little bit of CSS for our border. 
So we create a style element in the head of our page and add a CSS rule to it. We want a border around the whole table and each TH and each TD element. We want the border to be one pixel wide, solid and black. Let's check out the table in the browser now and we will see that the border will appear. A table with a single data row is pretty boring, so let's add more items to our table. The second item will be a tablet. So we create another TR element and two TD elements within it. The first TD element will be the name again, so we add tablet and the second TD element will be the price. Let's say our tablet costs 600. And because it was so much fun adding the second item, we will add a third one. This time we want to add a laptop and we repeat all the steps. First we create a TR element for indicating the row and the first TD element will be laptop because it's the name of the product and the third one the price again. This time the laptop is a little bit more expensive so it's 1500. There are three different tags to divide your tables into different sections. The T head for the table header, the T body for the main content of the table, and at last the T foot for the footer of the table. T head, T body, and T foot are completely optional and not necessary when you create your tables. Those elements can be used to define specific stylings for each section of the table. For example, if you want to add a specific background color to the footer of your table or make text in the header of the table bold. Remember our first row has th element and not td elements because we wanted them as headings. So this is our table header. So let's wrap the first table row within a t head element. The three rows showing our products phone, tablet and laptop are our table body so we wrap them in a T body element. We could use the table footer, for example, to display a sum of all the prices of our products. So let's add another table row with two TD elements. The first one will be sum and the second one, the sum of all prices, which is 2600. So let's wrap the sum row in a T foot element. A good table has a caption describing what the table is about. Table captions are created in HTML using the caption element. The caption element should be inside of the table element. Our table shows electronic products and their prices. So let's add a caption for that. The last thing we're going to learn in this video are column groups. Column groups are a cool way to customize the columns of your table in different ways. For example, we can use column groups to display the last two columns with a specific background color to highlight the importance. What we are going to do next is adding a description column to each of our table rows and making it appear in a gray background color. So let's add a third column to our table, description and add a suitable description for each of our products. Next, we're going to use the call group tag to define column groups. We have three different columns in our table, but our column group definition will only have two call elements within it. That's because the first two columns are one group, product and price, because we don't want to change the appearance of them. The third column, description, we want to display in a gray background color. The span attribute is used to say how many columns this column group will contain. And with the style attribute and a background color CSS rule, we change the background color of the third column to gray. Okay, so we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. If you like this HTML series, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to our channel to not miss out on any content about learning to code. So see you next time and happy coding!